And we're back, I think. Yeah. Yep. We're good to go. Hey, guys. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties. The IT guy doesn't know how to keep from crashing out the browser. Hashtag Corey sucks IT. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but we are back, and uh, we are still joined by Travis, Derek, and Rob. We've also got Dell Hewitt Jr. here. And we are talking about Bill Finger, who we've already covered a lot of this, but uh, it's a sad story. I, I'm, I'm having a real tough time with the segue here, but um, yeah. Well, you get past this, and I got a good transition. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so uh, basically what we've, we've established was that Bob Kane uh, was – uh, apparently a, an incredible businessman, uh, but maybe a tad evil. Maybe evil's a strong word. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely <laughs> incredibly selfish. Very yeah. selfish. No, when he made his retirement deal with DC in 68, he was just really excited about the big deal he made. He went and told artist Sheldon Moldoff about, I just made this great deal. I get to retire. And Sheldon, ghost artist for Bob, he hears this as, you're telling me I'm out of work? <laughs> you know, he's very excitedly telling Sheldon, just oblivious to the fact that he's talking to somebody who's out of work because of the deal he made. That, that that is very typical of him. Yeah, poor Sheldon Moldoff just really he he was so jaded about it. I once heard the fav my favorite quote of his is like, "Why do they call it the golden age of comics? They should call it the crap age of comics." <laughs> for how badly he was just treated left wow. and right. And you would see times where uh, Bob King would have kind of reflections on the past. It's like, think maybe I should have given him credit, but it would switch back very fast. Yeah, when he said it, he knew people had found out enough things that he needed to say it. But he was also doing it from the safety of the fact that Bill was dead and couldn't ask for the credit. Mm -mm. But that quote that our uh, trailer for the Kickstarter starts off, where Bob Kane was saying that, you know, oh, he's told his wife he wish he could go back. Okay, here's the quote. It's from Bob's autobiography. You know, I never thought of giving him a byline, and he never asked for one. I often tell my wife, if I could go back 15 years before he died, I'd like to say, I'll put your name on it now. You deserve it. Also, why only 15 years? Why not back to the very dadgum beginning? Uh, but it was a safe thing for him to say because Bill wasn't around to say, yes, I will take you up on this offer. And I, I know people who, you know, they, they consider Bob Kane friends, and they'll also say, that was crap. That was a load of crap. I forget. You, I, I, you've probably been doing it left and right. We cuss on this show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, there are people who say, it's like, that's bullshit. The people who knew Bob and liked Bob will say, that's bullshit. Wasn't it around the time of, of uh, the 89 Batman film when he actually first started talking publicly about Bill Finger? Yeah, 15 years. Bill died in 74 at 15 in 1989. And so... Yeah, that's why it's, that's what this 15-year thing is. And Yeah, he had to because too many people were saying things. So he had to go through and acknowledge some stuff while still saying, but I was the guy in charge. I had the the ideas. I'm an idea man. And, you know, Bill, Bill was just scripting the ideas that I had. No, he wasn't. Everybody who ever worked on that in any shape, form, or capacity can tell you, it's like, no, Carmine Infantino, he would get into a rage over it. Carmine Infantino would outright say, Batman was created by Bill Finger, Bob Kane had nothing to do with it. You know, Carmine had a lot of rage about that. That's just, does this happen nowadays? Because I, I mean, I know this is this is a long time coming, but it seems like we're way better about attribution. People kind of are more apt to you know kind of watch out for their interests. I mean, is this something that's still happening in in comics today? Not so good comics, but it does happen in plenty of areas. There are still ghost writers in a lot of different areas. And you know, they don't always get the credit. They don't always get the byline. James Patterson has never written an entire book. That's the um, Alex, Alex, Alex Cross. Cross and a whole yeah. lot of other things. He had, what, 12 books last year? 
And yeah, he some, writes about that many. Yeah. And some of them he has a co-author listed. And James Patterson, he has files full of, full of ideas, and, and he really is involved in the story, but he has never written an entire book by himself. And there are plenty of books where there's no ghost author listed. There's no co-author or whatever you would call him listed on those books. And there are people who, yeah, they, they, they're so eager to get in the business and to get paid that they accept that deal. They, oh, what is it, I Am Number 5 or whatever the name of that Oh, movie? yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Pitticus Lore and how he kind of got taken advantage of by, uh, uh -huh. oh, what's his name, James Frey that was in charge of all that. The yeah, James Frey, who had already pieces. been busted for, for being a fraud in other areas. And so, exactly. he did, but, th but then he still used his, his the fame that he had to get some very eager desperate co-writers. It's like, you know, the entire thing comes from this person, but then Frey's, Frey's name goes on it. It happens. But we hear about it in ways that you didn't hear about it way back when. You know, it's, I mean, you can have a good deal with a, a ghostwriter who completely accepts, you know, and if they are the ghostwriter and they make the contract a, ahead of time, you know, creative rights get more, more and more complicated. Uh, we we yeah. learn these things. We can spot them. We have an age of instant communication that wasn't around way back when. And that's what's so interesting about the the Batman story is that, you know, Bob Kane and Bill Finger's partnership in creating that character was basically a secret for a quarter century. I mean, that length of time, all these stories were written before Carmine Infantino and and all came in and really started breaking that image apart, you know, he really was, I created this character, I write everything, and I draw everything. For 25 years, there was just no question, that was the party line. Yeah, in the, in the 60s, after Finger had done his interview with the fanzine, where he, he spelled some things out, Bob, Bob Kane was just in a fury. He sent a letter in response, and very elaborate, they didn't end up printing it until 67, but he's making claims like, oh, at the beginning, I did all these things by myself. I mean, he did the first story, but we can all. Arlen Schumer has shown where, uh, yeah, Bob traced traced things from other people's stories. And uh, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, he did his own tracing, but you know, but he said, I, was, I still do ninety percent of the drawing by myself. He didn't do ten percent. Uh, not to mention um, uh, outright forging some things to pretty much yeah make his uh, make his legacy more secure, I suppose. Yeah, the one where he went back and showed this drawing from you know, Robert Kane, age whatever, and showed his yeah. Eagle Man, his Hawk Man, yeah. and his Batman. It's Bob Kane's own words prove that that was a fraud. That he created this after the fact that shows, see, I had the Batman way back when. Because in his own biography, he acknowledged that Bill suggested the gauntlets, the scallop cape, and that cowl. He acknowledged, Bob acknowledged that he'd had a domino mask and Bill suggested the cowl that was bat-like. Well, then how the hell did it show up back in that picture from when he was supposedly 13 or 14? Magic. That, Magical. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was a fraud. <laughs> Maybe he went back in the TARDIS. <laughs> That's the most logical explanation, which says something. It says a lot. Yeah, there's even a, uh, a an article by a guy named Jerry Bells who was, as uh, far as I can yeah. remember, the, one of the earliest champions of Bill, uh, like a 1965 article where he goes on to talk about Bill's contributions. And that's, yeah. that's you know, and uh, it was very uh, well received, but I think he, he took a lot of uh, flag for it as well. Well, and, and Jerry Bales is, just to remind everyone, he's practically the father of comics fandom. Mm -hmm. For all yeah. intents and purposes, if not comics conventions as a thing, you know. Well, Bales was there covering, you know, that first con or two in New York in '64 and '65. Yeah. Yeah, one of the, the those conventions, the first one in '64. You know, a young Michael Uslan, was it ten at eleven at the time? You know, he was at that convention with his friend Bobby. And this neighbor of his, Otto Binder, who worked in the comics industry, said, Mikey, Bobby, come over here. I want to meet the creator of Batman? And he introduced them to Bill Finger. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, dude. Yeah. Too bad he couldn't get the picture where he's like, you know, arm around this guy. That would be an awesome picture. Yeah. Too bad he couldn't get any pictures. There's so few. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, again, so, thanks to, uh, so few photos of Bill, and man, is it a tiny number of people who are still around who even knew him to talk about him. I mean, there had to have been more in the course of 60 years of life. Okay, he's been gone for 40 years. He died a few weeks short of his 60th birthday. But he lived 60 years. He had to have been in front of a lot of cameras. There have to be pictures out there that nobody realizes they've got a Bill Finger photo. Athena finally found a new one the other day, mm -hmm. his granddaughter. And there have to have been people who knew him, his neighbors, his you know, people, uh, the, the picture of him playing golf. Who did he play golf with? Who did he go to college with? Okay, they, the, those people would be hitting 100, So, but there have to be others. But the people who worked with him when he's been gone for 40 years, these are some older individuals, and it's a tiny number left. I he I checked with Alan Bellman, who drew some work that Bill did over at Marvel, a timely Marvel later in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And Alan said, you know, he got this. Alan got the script from Stan Lee, the editor. He told me that Bill dealt directly with Stan. So I checked with Stan. Stan has no memory of Bill at all. And so, you know, because Stan has had a lot of people work under him over the years. And Stan was pretty directly doing the editing there in the 40s after uh, Joe Simon was gone from Timely. And, you know, we've, we've prodded him, shown him this story. It's like Stan has no memory uh, of Bill, Bill having worked for him. So there was something unassuming about Bill so some people could even just forget him. Yeah, there was one of the... Um... I don't know if you, do you guys listen to uh, Fat Man on Batman with Kevin Smith? Sometimes. Fantastic podcast, yeah. And the one on Bill Finger that Mark Nobleman did with him was really good. That, yeah, that was really good. Um, and that, in fact, that's that's how I first heard about this. Mm -hmm. um, and then shortly after that, we had a, a Adam Prince on our show, and he's a cosplayer that uh, dresses up like uh, the Dark Knight, like. Uh, Christopher Nolan version of Batman does conventions, things like that. And he mentioned Bill Finger. Uh, and I guess he had heard about it the same way. I mean, it's just, that's just one of the things with new media, you know, we can find out about these things, but had I not heard about that, I would have had no clue. Um, and then the, I think uh, the past three episodes, he's been talking to Neil Adams and Neil went through yeah, the whole... It turned, in, it turned into a three-parter because Neil can talk for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he went into the kind of the whole rigmarole about uh, Siegel and Schuster, and then when they got to after that, uh, Kevin brought up um, Bill Finger, and it seemed like Neil was like, well, he was very timid, and you know, he wouldn't stand up for anything, and you, you know, it's just one of those things. It's kind of like there wasn't there wasn't somebody to stand up for this guy, and and, and fortunately now there are several people who are willing to do so. Albeit, you know, not in a good matter of time, but he he deserves his his name. At the very least, he deserves his name on on some of these, you know, uh, works, some of these movies, some of these cartoons, and these books. He deserves his name, and his family should be getting some kind of royalty. Bob Kane got rich and famous, not just famous, rich and famous off all this. Uh, and his family, they can enjoy that for a long, long time. He's really something should go to his family when you know they 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 making ends meet the way they make ends meet, while they see this multi-billion-dollar industry, all, all kinds of people making money off Bill's ideas. They know they're not the ones who came up with the ideas, but neither are Kane's heirs. So I was actually wondering. I mean, clearly you guys have a passion. Um, for kind of preserving Finger's legacy, and to do a documentary alone, you know, shows real gumption on your part. And so, is it that kind of like passion that's united you guys? I guess in the first place to meet, and then to decide this is kind of how we want to, you know, like help either you know preserve his work or even maybe kind of set it straight now. Well, this grew by degrees. 
just you know, bit by bit by increments. And it's like, okay, if we're getting Athena Finger to be a guest at Comic-Con, well, we need a tribute panel. And we're going to have a tribute panel. I was exchanging ideas with Michael Youson, producer of the movies. And the oh, longest email I've ever gotten from Michael was how fired up he got over, over the things we can do for the Batman anniversaries. Because normally I get an email from Michael. It's short. I've seen him when he's going through his emails. He gets like 200 in a day. You know, and he's going through them very quickly. So I get a reply, it's short. That one was the long, man, it was long. Just his <laughs> ideas on the things we can do for the anniversary. And he's naming all kinds of people we can bring in. And a number of the people who are still around are in their 90s and wouldn't be up to traveling. So I was like, well, if you're going to get them involved, record some of it. Oh, and we can show some of it uh, on, on, you know, at the, at the panel. Well, some of that's going to involve some costs and travel. And, and you know, it, it, keeps, it keeps escalating. It's like, oh, well, if we're going to have some costs to help us with that, maybe we can do some more. And what would be right? And it's like, get Athena to meet, because Athena says she wanted to meet with some of the people who knew Bill. And it's like, all right, well, you don't have much time for these things. You can't dawdle when you're talking about people in their 90s. Yeah, that's definitely true. I'm curious, how many, is, how many people actually are still around who actually knew Bill? It is a pretty small list, of course, that, that we know of. Uh, Murphy Anderson, artist, he, he would know. Yeah, I don't think we have a head count. Uh, 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 Danny Fing is. Well, Danny Fingeroth and I were going through this last night. You know, there's some of Bill's relatives, but they wouldn't know anything on the professional end of things. Um, yeah. As far as people who worked under Bob Kane, I think there's like one. Oh, uh, uh, Rob, yeah. the, the, I, the, the writer who uh, said he wanted to help in, with us over him losing his job over championing for Bill. I'm not saying yes. the name right now. I, just, I finally got my email from him. So, Oh, fantastic. I'd love, right. to, uh, I'd love to talk to that guy. So, uh, and while the rest of them wonder, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Let's just say, tune back into us in a couple of days. You'll, yeah. you'll find something very exciting. Okay, cool. Okay, Ron, how many people know him? Let me let me look at the... Danny Fingeroth and I were emailing each other last night quite a lot. Let me go through this little... To make it more simple, has anybody else come forward when they've heard about this push to remember Bill? I mean... Oh, sometimes. I mean, there have been times like when Mark Nobleman, like he would do uh, an interview somewhere, and he would hear from an old friend of Bill's. And so a few people have emerged, and some old friends... In terms of the professionals, these numbers are small. Uh, Neil Adams is. I understand. My understanding is Neil Adams never met him. Denny O'Neill uh, has. He he spent a long evening chatting with Bill, and he's promised me that story. Uh, I, I need yeah, to ask. We need Ken, to, yeah, we need we to need ask. Ken, well, we need to ask Ken Bald. You know, uh, though he, Ken never worked with Bill, but he was working in the comics industry back when. So there's a chance. Even even if he didn't know, like Alan Bellman didn't know uh, Bill directly, I still would like to actually hear from them, them being the few people who were, are still alive from having been in the industry back in the golden age. What did they know about Bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this secret that was pretty well known in the industry, I would like to hear from them from them about that. And that they're 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 useful people. It's, oh, we've got some of, some of his relatives, and man, the, the list is small of, of the ones. Although, really, the, anybody who was working for DC in the 60s, there's a chance, like that whole batch that got fired for wanting the health insurance, there are others still around from then. I would yeah. like to hear from them about that, because that's relevant to Bill's life. What it does sound like, you're saying you're a lot of them are advanced age, so... It's not necessarily they're, like they're going to be on Twitter or Facebook, just kind of... <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. Well, uh, thing, it, it sounds like they didn't get the health insurance, so uh, the fact uh, that they could still be well, here... So. That's sadly true. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, oh, that's awful. Uh, Joe Giella. Joe Giella was Bob Kane's last ghost inker on the, the, the Batman comics. And so Joe Giella is the last surviving artist who worked under Bob. And Joe's got some interesting stories to tell on the on the whole situation with Bob, but I, I have to deal with Joe by phone. Uh, not by email or anything like this. I have to deal... And Joe's in his 80s, so he, you know, he's at the later end of that. And Joe, you know, he'll tell you about how it's like when he would... 
uh, take the, the, the blue pencil and draw the, the characters. So Bob could then take the art with the blue pencil that wouldn't show up in black and white TV, and Bob could draw over it on TV like he's just spitting them out, drawing them live. <laughs> Whoa, really? Really. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. we... We kind of think that uh, Bob got a little better at it because we found some old footage uh, from the uh, around the time the Batman movie came out, and you know, thankfully Bob worked a lot on his art chops after he retired from comics. But uh, we think he got good enough to do a passable Batman in a good Dick Sprang style. Well, I think he had the late 80s. <laughs> I think Bob had very specific ones because it's like there's this this video that shows him doing that, and he does not. But it is the same Batman face. The same Batman pose. He drew over and over. Yeah. So, a, you know, he was limited in what he was doing. And if you he go and compare it, yeah, it looks nothing like, you know, when he was actually drawing Batman in a very kind of, uh, you know, his original style, you know, you can tell that he's more like, like, this is how Dick Sprang drew Batman, and I took credit for it. You know? <laughs> so was he drawing the smiley Batman? The smiley Batman. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the everybody's favorite pal Batman. <laughs> hey. with, with big cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a kind of a for you, yeah. And that's why I love Dick Sprang's kind of take on, on the art is because it's kind of a derived uh, Chester Gould, Dick Tracy sort of style, and I always loved that. Yeah, I was I mean, I never really thought of this, but I I did hear that you know, a lot of the rogues gallery was based around Dick Tracy villains. Uh, Bill denied it. Yeah. And you go, it is, for the most part, it is hard to find an exact match on the different characters. Okay, there is one with the, 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 the blank face on one character who shows up at one point. It's like, okay, that looks pretty directly ripped. But the, the, just the idea of having such a strange rogues gallery in and of itself that seems to have originated with Dick Tracy, and Jerry Robinson said it did. Bill Finger said it did not. Bill Finger, he would go through, it's like, no, look, you know, these characters of mine, they appeared before um, Flat Top, before, and he'd go through naming all kinds of specific Dick Tracy villains. The best known ones did come along after, but there were a few uh, odd ones who showed up before. So Dick Tracy did did have the starts of a rogues gallery, so uh, it's it's... Kind of iffy there. Bob said he, he, you know, something about the best, the best Rose Gallery this side of Dick Tracy, but um, and Bob didn't like to admit to influences. Yeah, and um, but again, the, the creation of Joker is so well kind of researched and and kind of uh, you know everyone knows the facts of that if you kind of look into it far enough that it's it's pretty clear that that's got nothing to do with that. And I was a bit surprised to learn from talking to, uh, hearing what Travis had to say from talking with Jerry Robinson and seeing other things, like uh, I managed to see The Man Who Laughed on TV years ago, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the Joker. And to find out that that had nothing to do with it, that was very surprising. Well, no nothing is not accurate. Uh, it's, as you know, Jerry had his Joker playing card, which does not quite look like Conrad. Jerry said beat. It would have been Veit, because it was German. But yeah. uh, Jerry, Jerry said beat. Uh, was, you know, the, the, you know, the debate, you know, like whether it originated with Bill or Jerry, Bob gave, most, gave more credit to Bob and Bill, especially Bill, more so than Jerry. Bob wasn't going to give credit to Jerry, because Jerry was just an assistant. You know, he, he would see Bill as a collaborator. And here was Jerry in that first year of the comics working with Bob and Bill, feeling like a team. Bob never saw it that way. You know, everybody else who ever worked on, on the comic, he always saw them as assistants. And you know, he, you know, he'd refer to somebody like Neil Adams as his assistant, and Neil came along after Bob had nothing to do with it. And you know, so you know, they're, they're creating... Yeah, there are different accounts, and Jerry's is the most specific. And people go, it's like, well, it makes sense. Bill came up with all these other fantastic villains. It's totally believable he came up with the Joker, too. That is true. But... Actually, Jerry being the one to have started the idea, he's got this very specific account of how he's he was taking a college class, and they needed extra stories for Batman number one because they're going to the quarterly with extra stories. And Jerry was excited because he was finally going to get to write a story, and he, and he got to count it in his college class too. 
and he has the idea, and he had the, the, the family with his playing cards, and it's his history on the camp family with the cards, and then he has that sketch that he drew that first night, and he brings it in. It's like the Joker from the cards. You know, needs to be the villain. And what Jerry said is that Bill saw the drawing and said, that's Conrad Beat. And neither Bob nor Jerry had ever heard of that before. And this conversation is in Bob's account, too. Just the order of things is different in Bob's account. And, and, and in Bill's. See, there's a, they've got three different versions, but they overlap. And Bill is, okay, I'll, I'll show you. And Bill came in days later with this photo book from the movie The Man Who Laughs and pictures of Conrad Beat, as they call him all throughout. And, and Jerry said, we did refer to that. It did help us shape with what we were completing with that first story. But then Jerry talks about his disappointment on not getting to actually finish the script, on how they decide, okay, well, we'll have Bill take the basics of the story Jerry came up with and finish it. And that's, that disappointment is also something that is just so specific. Uh, it's, I think all three are telling stories that are basically true. They, the, the areas where they overlap, I, I think the idea did originate with Jerry. Um, but then otherwise, I, I think I know how all these fit together. There's one bit of evidence that actually I'm... I'm I think I can get to confirm which it is. And then I'll publish that in a journal article. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> but, to yeah, even, get, but to, to even have a third of a creation of a character like the Joker, I mean, you know, that's, that's yeah. all. Yeah. 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 I kind of want to know, um, in, in kind of putting all this together, what's the most surprising thing that you guys have discovered um, either about Bill Finger's history or, or you know, just on his own or his involvement? Uh, well, I can, I can say for my, uh, you know, first being the Batman fan and not knowing his involvement, that was number one. Number two sure. was that uh, he had the create, you know, was a co-creator in so many other characters and, uh, and villains. Like even, I don't know if you guys are fans of the Arrow television show on CW. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah I, I watch it as well. But uh, Clock King is a, is a villain who's going to be on there is on there currently, and that's another one of Bill's creations. So oh, you know, wow. a lot of the the things he he had a hand in uh, are still you know people are still going to the well for those ideas. That's very cool. I think the biggest surprise when is when I, I it really hit me that Bob Kane contributed nothing specific except the name. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd learned by degrees that Bill was involved along the way, but I still remember it's like just the feeling when it really hit me. We can't confirm Bob Kane did anything except the name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he traced some pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, when, well, when, you, when you were talking about the, uh, like, kind of the conception of the Joker, Travis, I couldn't help but be reminded of <laughs> the Joker telling his origin story. Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah. uh, no, I would put it this way, but uh... yeah, I, I've made that analogy myself. I know what you're saying. You know. That's pretty good. Yeah, if I have to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, referring to um, you know uh, uh, Bob Kane tracing. To be fair, he was tracing Alex Robbins, uh, Alex uh, uh, Alex Raymond, rather who, you know, two-thirds of comics artists at the time were tracing Alex Raymond. So, yeah. you know, that's that's not too terribly unjust. Um, but it is interesting to kind of track that back and find that that's, again, who was ripped from. Man, this is bumming me out. <laughs> I mean, that's why they're doing this project. It, it is sad, but, I mean, you guys, yeah. are, you guys are doing some really good work. Um... And and uh, dear God, uh, what? Oh my God! What is the book called? Is it Bill the Boy Wonder? Yes. Bill the Boy Wonder, the secret co-creator of Batman by Mark T. Nobleman. Mark Nobleman. Yes, I'm so bad with names of everything and people, but uh, yeah, I'm just glad that people are are kind of raising awareness of this now. Yeah, there's also a Spanish language biography of Bill Finger that's coming out this year uh, by by uh, David Hernando, who's who's an associate producer of ours now. He and, and so we're he's going to send us uh, five copies of that to include in our giveaways. It's like we keep going in the number of books involved yeah. because well we've got numerous authors. Michael Uslan has his autobiography, The Boy Who Loved Batman. 
I've got my book, Batman and Psychology, A Dark and Stormy Night. Uh, although the, the first one is, is Mark's book because this is about Bill Finger. So start with the w one that giving it as a reward also serves the ultimate purpose of educating people about Bill. And then we've got the others, which are all Bat-related and Bill-related. Yeah, there's some really awesome perks on the uh, on the Kickstarter campaign. And uh, just, just looking at those, it's it's a good problem to have to have stretch goals too. Once you've meet, met the uh, the minimum that you put up there. Which, by and, the way, congratulations, guys! Thank you. Well, have, thank you. You have exceeded that. We we have, although we also have six days in which people can cancel. Not that I should be reminding them of that, but I <laughs> I won't I won't, breathe, I won't breathe easily until it's over. Yeah. It's until like our three largest ones could all cancel, you know, they could have spouses who say, "What are you giving them that money for?" Yeah. And, and us still be, and us still make it. I, I won't feel safe until you know it's over, or we were, or we're at, or that yeah. for those three largest, we'd have to be at seventeen and a half for me to be safe. Yeah, well, we're we're really thankful that you know so many. It's it's more than just like oh, this is a cool project and I want the swag. People yeah. really believe in it, and we're getting conversations into conversations with people that we never expect who really just believe in this project, and they're 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 don't they're backing us not not to get things, but because they really want to be a part of a movement in. The comic in comics history to change something that needed to be changed seventy five years ago. You know, uh, it's yeah. When very, you read, very, yeah. When you read the backstory on it, I mean, the, and there really is no other more just cause than this for the creator. So, you know, how could you not contribute to the campaign? Yeah, I've, I felt inspired even before talking with you, but now it's like exactly like Corey is there looking at the. The levels and be like, what am I gonna do? So, <laughs> well, you you have time to think it over. Yeah, <laughs> I have six days. Six days. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Athena Finger is, is has been so grateful to the outpouring of fans. Like the Google Doodle campaign that Mark was trying to get for Bill's hundredth birthday. Athena wasn't really expecting that work out. She is Bill's granddaughter, after all. Uh, she's accustomed to some of these things, you know, not going to the best way possible. But she was still incredible. To her, the the best thing that was served was that it helped bring attention to it all. And she's she's very grateful. She said she said outright she's humbled by it all. And she for 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 us, it is an honor to be part, an honor to play a role in helping you know what we can with the legacy uh, for. This man who gave us this character that resonates in the conscious of the majority of the planet. Yeah. And a character that's going to be around probably the end of time. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It'll outlive all of us for sure. Yeah. And yeah, if you don't believe it, just watch the video again. I mean, looking at uh, Athena and Benjamin's faces when now they have an opportunity to really reach out and touch a part of their lives that they really have not had an opportunity to know. Yeah. It's just you, you. That really just is is amazing, and you want to make that right. You know, go watch the video seriously. <laughs> yeah, it begins and ends with the cute kid. Yeah, we 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 did something right there. <laughs> did the same kid said I've tried to say before that uh, my granddad made Batman? People would laugh at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. kids weren't believing him yeah, in school. I see that. It's like, man, that's, that's got to suck. Around Doesn't that just, that is like the story of everyone who ever loved comics as a kid. You like these? What kind of jerk are yeah. you, you know? And it, even worse for him, you know, like, oh, created Batman? Ha ha, what are you, making this up? Well, it was a lot harder on Athena when she was a kid. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just repeating the things I know she has said publicly. But she, you know, when she was a kid, she found you know, she just knew it from her family. Oh, that's cool! And she mentioned it on some project uh, in in school, and the teacher got on to her for making up stories, and that, and the reactions from other people. Athena just learned not to talk about it. She said it, it ended up feeling like the family's dirty little secret, because of the way people would react with just not believing it. Yeah, it's something so big, you know, how do you deal with people who will not believe you, you know? 
But even at that, when she got married, she kept the finger name because of the honor to this grandfather who did so much. Wow. It's one of the advantages of now, the, the time how it's passed in the media, is, it's so easy to access different story and you can research stuff a lot easier. I mean, it's easier to spread the word now. It's, it's harder to convince somebody they're a liar of certain things. Yeah. With a, you know what I'm saying? And thankfully, a lot of Bill Finger's work on that character has been brought into print. And, you know, for the fact that DC can't assign him creative credit in the sense of the character, they can assign him writer credit now. They have gone back and done that, and that's very good. Oh, they have been, they have been giving him that credit, though? In reprints, they'll list him as a writer yeah. on specific stories. Oh, and okay. they've been doing that for years and years now. Yeah. And that's not really a big controversy. So did he have a? It have, did he have his hand in? What, and what, all, what all characters did he have his hand creating? In all characters, villains wise, or up to a certain point? Yeah, it, it's yeah you know, the, mm -hmm. the you know the Joker, the, the the Penguin. The Penguin starts with Bob seeing a penguin, and hey, let's on a cigarette <laughs> thing says, let's turn this into a villain. Okay, but still, <laughs> Bill wrote the story. Bill took that penguin with the cigarette and turned it into a person. Uh, the yeah. uh, what Calendar Man. Ca yeah, Calendar Man. I believe Cat Man as well. Yeah, and the Riddler, Julius Schwartz outright said, and it said in print, in, in a letter uh, column, you know, Bill Finger's the creator of the Riddler. And in Bob Kane's biography, Bill does not talk about the creation. Bob, Bob Kane's biography, Bob does not talk about the creation of the Riddler. He also does not talk about the creation of the Scarecrow, because Bob had nothing to do with the scare creation of the Scarecrow either. Yeah, there's one thing we just recently did on uh, on the fan page is we've taken the kind of the famous silhouette of Bill, one of the only pictures that you've seen in him with the baseball cap, and, and a cutaway of that, and inserted characters that he uh, had a hand in. And so you know you have your standard uh, the Batman, Robin, and uh, and some of those, but you know Lana Lang is another one that not too many people know. I know that. Hmm. And it's a series that called From Bill uh, as though uh, it, it were his gift to everyone who loves comics. Who's doing so those? That's, that's is that you doing those? Look. What? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, those are great. Yeah, it's just a way to kind of put in one place uh, once they're done. We still have uh, several to go uh, to do, but you can see in sort of a one-stop shop all of the things he actually did, and it's it's... It's pretty overwhelming. Yep, you go to Wikipedia, it lists Bill Finger uh, for creator on Lana Lang. That proves it's real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so everybody, this is a call to arms for all the folks out there watching or listening to this. Uh, you got six days. Right now it is 1019 Eastern Time. Thursday, February 27th in the year of our Lord, 2014. Uh, you can go to... 20 what? 2015. This year is 2014. You, I know. I'm just trying to throw Corey off. He's fucking... <laughs> All right. So, guys, go to kickstarter.com, and I guess you can just search for Bill Finger. I'm sure that will work. That that Bill will Finger Kickstarter and Google will pull us right up top result. There you go, guys. Go to Google. Use Chrome. Okay. <laughs> First lesson. Go to Google. Search for Bill Finger Kickstarter. Um, they've reached their goal, but hey, stretch goals are a beautiful thing. You can get in on this. Um, it looks like you can get the... Uh, do, 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 do. If you pledge at the $25 level, you can get in on the DVD. So if you like tangible things... There you go. If you're more digital, I think you can go ten cheaper. Ten bucks, guys. You can't beat that for ten bucks and to support something that's really awesome. Yeah, ten bucks will get you a copy of the movie. Twenty-five will get you a DVD of the movie. Uh, you can get all kinds of swag in between. Uh, we are putting up the bat signal. Come, come help. <laughs> yeah, and and the, the stretch goals are important because. We want to do more than just make this short film. We want to be able to have the family involved. Because, what? okay, it'll make a cooler film if you have the film showing the family meeting people. But yeah. I think it's also just important for their sake that we help them be involved. And that's why I'm, you know, I really want to make at least that first stretch goal. 
Yeah, because there's going to be a lot of memories we can help make with that extra money. I mean, it's more than just, you know, we can make a movie on what we've got. We can make a lot of awesome memories by hitting these stretch goals. We can put these things on film. We can have so many cool extras that we can produce. It's yeah. no. It's, it's one thing to make the short film. It's another thing to make a short film that people will want to watch and that will stay with them. Yeah. I, for one, am a sucker for... I mean, I, are, are we going to call this... Is it a documentary? I mean, it's essentially a documentary, right? Yeah, that's what it's, we've been calling it. it. I guess that depends on its length. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, the very least, at the very least, it's a short tribute film. But it's, it's not just saying, hey, he's great. It is about educating people. Yeah. I feel like we've gotten... I mean... We were talking before the show, and, and our knowledge of Bill Finger was so limited. But mine was basically what had Kevin Smith said to me for the past two weeks on different podcasts. Um, and I guess my you know my co-hosts were kind of in a similar situation. Mine was the extent of the Green Lantern. That's, that's as much as I knew. So, I mean, you guys have educated us already. I, I, and if anything, it's made me want to watch the film even more, so... Are y'all going to do any kind of screening like at uh, Comic Con or anything like that, and possibly get this finished? That's yeah. That's the really. That's I mean, that's where it started. Was okay. with what can we do to show some of these people who can't make it to Comic Con with us? And then okay, if we're going to do that, that involves travel, and we might as well make something better. So yeah, the the plan is to show it at Comic Con this July. Okay. At least, at very least, the shortest version of it. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, carry it around to a lot of different times and places, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that looks in the future. Cool beans. That is awesome, well, guys. If uh, if you are interested, definitely go check this out. Uh, take a look at the Kickstarter page. Uh, throw some money their way. I, I think this is a very valid cause. If you're watching this or listening to it, you're definitely into this stuff already. So why not? Um, <laughs> And you can get some cool stuff out of it. Hey, you know, it's good. It's good to get. It's better to give. So do both in, in the one fell swoop. Yeah. yeah. Even if you've enjoyed Batman, and the, even if you only watched Super Friends as a kid, you know, <laughs> do something. Yeah. yeah. If if you love Batman, if you've gotten some enjoyment out of Batman, I'm not set, I'm not trying to guilt trip anybody, but consider helping to make things right for the person that created this character. Yeah, put a buck in for the man who created yeah. this thing that's important to you. Yeah, one dollar. You know, you can go buy a five dollar DVD. Throw one dollar at us. You know, or or throw in some pizza money. That's of course better than one dollar. Instead of going exactly. buying those Blu-rays, Batman and Robin, <laughs> <laughs> send that money to more useful. <laughs> no one's buying. <laughs> <laughs> we we can proudly say we may have grossed better than Batman and Robin <laughs> at this point. I don't know. No. I've seen that abomination four times. Really? Whoa. Well, I saw it in the theater when it came out because it's a Batman movie. Actually, I did see it in the theater, too. Yeah. That was... I, I saw it when I was working on the uh, sample chapters for my Batman and Psychology book. I saw it one more time while working on the book to try to see if I could find anything psychological to talk about. And, you know, the, its only lesson is men have nipples, women don't figure out for yourself what psychological issues figure into that. There's one, there's one new thing I have recently found out about that film, and there is a YouTube channel called Cinema Sins. They oh, yeah, it. that was, I know what you're talking about. Uh, and it's... And I, I didn't even realize they they, they fought, apparently the Coolio the rapper he's plays one of the gang leaders and they run the bike races or whatever. They said really in a yeah. movie that is filled with puns how could not have Coolio have the henchman for the the, uh, the Mister Freeze? I'm like why did they not do that? That would have been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can spend an evening ranting about that movie. <laughs> yeah, next time. Today is about celebrating someone else. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that we need to know about Bill Finger or the Kickstarter? Oh gosh, people are probably tired of us by now. Just, just, yeah, just, yeah. just, just go watch the video on the Kickstarter. Watch yeah, that go video. Watch people. that video. Watch if that you video. don't believe it yet, watch the video. It will tear you left and right. Give you, give you all the feels. 
Yeah. Or, we, no, we, don't oversell it. It will give you some feels. We do have some feels. Our Facebook page, and we will put a link up again for people who want to find the video. And uh, I lost my train of thought. I know that feeling. <laughs> Well, okay. So, so before you guys got on, we were talking about um, comics in general. So, from the three of you guys, I want to know if there's anything you've read recently uh, that you just love, or um, maybe a bat, like your f- favorite Batman story that you've ever read. Wow, those are two very different questions. Or favorite? just do both. Okay. It's, I, I think one particularly powerful Batman story is the Night of the Stalker from the early 70s. Now, Batman doesn't say one word in the entire thing. It's a, it's a very, very powerful story. It has been reprinted. In terms of recent things, there's there are some good things in the new Detective 27, actually, I, that I really enjoyed. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the new run uh, of Capullo and those guys on the, on the new Batman. Certainly. Mm-hmm. Scott Snyder's kind mm-hmm. of writing writing his own checks over there at DC now. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, as far as favorite uh that, that's that's a huge question. You know, where do you where do you start? But um, every iteration of the character I kind of like in a little bit in some way. But uh, yeah, that's 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 a tough one. I will say so far as recent comics goes, um, was it uh, Five Weapons, uh, in an indie book? I've been really enjoying that one. That sounds familiar. Is that Image or...? I believe Image, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Dude, everything Image is doing right now, I mean, not to throw us too far off Batman, but... Sure, yeah. Oh, God, Image is on fire. Yeah. Right now. I mean, everything they do is, is wonderful. Rob, you got anything for us? Uh... I haven't been following much of the newer comics in a little while. I'm guilty like that, but uh, my local comic shop is uh, stocked up on a whole bunch of old EC comics reprints, and I've been slowly buying through anything Harvey Kurtzman ever did, uh, which is wonderful, and you should all do that at some point if you ever have the opportunity. Um, As far as Batman goes... um, I gotta stick with Dark Knight Returns. It sounds like the obvious choice, but the more I read it, the more I get out of it. You know, it doesn't you know, get it, old. It does not. Don't don't watch the movie. I mean, the movie's probably very good. Go go read the book like you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another good one. I have to say, I just recently read the uh, the three parter Untold uh, Untold Legend of Batman, and uh, that that still stands up to me as well. The ending's a little. Yeah, but you know, I love the artwork, love the love the story, and it just kind of captures a lot, uh, a good snapshot of that time period for the character, I think. Now, when you talk about Dark Knight Returns, are you, movie, are you talking about the animated movie, the two-parter? The animated movie, yeah. Oh my god, dude, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I've seen a little read bit of first. it. Read first. Read. Yeah, read read first. I'm just saying that there's so many things that I don't know if they quite pulled out right into the animated version, you know, that, that are, are literary. You know, the book is so literary uh, that I I'm, I'm just think that it's important to, to read that book and then go enjoy the movie. I'm not saying the movie's bad. I'm just saying uh, <laughs> go do the right thing there. <laughs> were, were you hoping that they, they would have had, like, a, a narrative going through the, the movie? Uh, well, I really haven't seen more than about ten minutes of it, so I can't really say for certain. It's just impossible to translate the qualities of Frank Miller's, you know, ink and line drawings into into animation in any way. Um, beyond that, there's a lot of subtext that I'm not sure if they got in. Uh, I need to watch it. Um, parts where he's talking about Frederick Wortham. I'm not sure if that made it in. And that's real subtle stuff. Um, you know, that that's. Uh, uh, stuff I'd love to see if he made it in or not, or if they picked up on it when they were making the film version, or if they were like, this is silly, just cut it out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to close the conversation no, you're entirely. Good. <laughs> you're good, you're good. 
Uh, Eric and I have this thing about awkward pauses on these uh, shows. We're going to have a conversation over, Kyle. apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I get a kick out of it. I like, I like to see how people react to it. Um, so you're a fan of Craig Kilborn? Um, yeah, he's okay. He likes doing deliberate awkward pauses with the guest at times. Oh, jeez. I, I didn't see. I didn't know that, but. I thought I was coming up with something new, man. See, <laughs> I need to give Craig Kilborn out attribution for that. Yeah. Uh, terrible times. Uh, well, guys, um, any other tidbits? Well, I would certainly say check out the the Facebook page. We'd love to see the numbers grow. We'd love to hit you know bigger numbers, of course, to spread to help spread the word. What Facebook page is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you guys the link, and you can put, post it in the, the show notes. But it's essentially, if you search uh, Facebook, uh, Bill Finger Group, uh, forward slash Bill Finger Group, it'll come up. And, not, and let me also say, on that group, we are not Bob Kane bashers at all. Uh, we just simply want to put the, uh, the facts out there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like we really, really try to focus on the pro bill stuff ourselves. But when you, you know, when you get too far, you can't completely avoid some bob bashing. Yeah. So there's some anti. <laughs> to really get accurately pro bill, there's going to be some anti bob in there because that's that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's an absolute fact. Yeah. The the reason why the situation is what it is is because Bob Kane made a an unethical choice in not attributing to his friend. Uh, the, what he deserved. And I mean, you, you can't avoid that. We haven't said anything else about anyone else in any bad way, but, you know, that's that's what the facts are. Yeah. And, uh, and our, our kind of decision on that was, you know, he's certainly not here to defend himself. Bill's not here to defend himself. So we just kind of go with, you know, here's, here's the facts, what they are. And, uh, and just appreciate the work he did. You know, make your own assumptions from that. For some reason, all I have now is an image in my head of Bob Kane as the penguin signing in DC. Going, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> just tracing over those blue on. lines. <laughs> <laughs> Batman just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll smile for justice. <laughs> oh my God, I'm having too much fun. Okay, guys. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, yeah, and we will we will put links to all the websites, the Kickstarter, the Facebook group. Definitely, we'll put that in our uh, show notes, and we'll we will pimp that out on our Vitamin Geek page. Um, it's always fun to talk about comics, but it's even cooler when we can talk about them in a way that's you know doing something good, man. I mean, because it's not every day you're talking about Batman and and actually doing something that you should definitely feel good about. So I'm I'm pretty excited about this project. And you guys are doing doing good work. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and we will have you guys back on sometime. Uh, definitely, if you guys are doing any any new projects, just reach out and let us know, and we'll we'll be glad to get the word out and you know reach as far as we can. Perfect. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. Bye, bye, bye. 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 <laughs> I feel like I was doing that dance now. Just ba ba ba. Now hey. the nineties are calling and they want their song back. Hey, oh, that's... you got you gonna unbroadcast now? I can. Or I uh, can't. But our instant cover band has almost formed. We still have two viewers, guys. We have a. Who are the viewers? Ask us questions. <laughs> viewers, viewers, give us questions or tell us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're gone. <laughs> Wait, what happened? No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Look, it's all focusing on Michael now to stretch out the bed. <laughs> now for bad. Vitamin Geek After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, you guys, come, come to Conuga. <laughs> Conuga, a.k.a. Frolicon North. Yep. All right, Del. See you, bud. Um, okay. Those guys were really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome.
Is I'm Dell doing like, one of those uh, Vin <laughs> Vin Diesel dances in the camera now? What happened? Oh, he just bounced. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was gonna do the Vin Diesel thing where he's like, oh, I'm singing Katy Perry. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I never actually watched that. Believe it or not, but he, he grabbed his junk. Oh, um, maybe, maybe that's why. Did you play, play the song from a uh, Song of the Lambs? It's hilarious. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. Buy horses. Yeah. It just seems creepy. Uh, oh yeah, Corey, I meant to show you this the other day. I tell you about it. Bear back. Uh, I just invited a bunch of people to like this Facebook page. Yay! So I liked another one first and shared it, and it wasn't them, but I think it's for them too. So I'm confused. You see it? Gotta switch over to Eric here. Part man, part machine, all toy. What? Is it the is it supposed to be the NES? Yeah, so it's the third one. Oh my god. That's too cool. <clears throat> Are you going to open it? I don't want to. It looks so good. In it. <laughs> I, already, I already have open it and look at it. Unboxing. Well, the whole thing is it's meant to look like the game card. <clears throat> But yeah, I do. I got that books a million. So they wanted twenty bucks for it, but since I was buying three <coughs> graphic novels and no, I bought two graphic novels and I get the third item equal value for uh, for free basically. Oh okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, how did you barter with books a million? But and that I... figure is basically a repainted version of this. That's okay. Yeah, leave it in the box then. No, tell us in the corner. Okay, hey, hey, viewers, vote right now. Should Eric leave it in the box or take it out? Let your voice be heard. Take it out. Yeah, should I leave it in or take it out? <laughs> You're not a viewer. I'm going to become a viewer. Viewing. Vote. What? I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> hey, remember when I was talking about your long Halloween book, the one I gave you, how it was thicker? The one that split into five sections? Yes. Yeah. That yeah. That's yeah. how thick it is. Yeah, but... Yours, yours is about... These two together. Yours These has everything in it, though. It's not like the, there's an extra book. I, I just don't know why yours is thicker. Because I ate a lot of protein. You guys uh -huh. need to get... You guys need to get this book. This is a uh, bat manga. <laughs> it was Batman. Oh, you're in the serious. 60s. It was Batman in the sixties. Was you know popular in Japan, and so a manga artist did serials of Batman over there. And so it's a really cool like archival collection of the best ones that they still had um, preserved. So yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. Serious. So sincere. I'm like the XM. I'm so serious. Oh my god. <laughs> what do y'all want to talk about? Uh, uh, Liz says out of the box. Yeah. Uh, but Liz, that box is dope. Yeah, let me pull that. It's out the box. Out <laughs> of the box. Put the box on if you bed. <laughs> yeah. My bed's already full of crap. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your... Look I, at this box. Sorry, I was totally thinking that, too. <laughs> you know how nice this box is? All right, how about this? You take it very carefully out the box. Oh, I've already had it out of the box. I can do oh. that right now. Oh, well, that's too late, then. Yeah. Put the that fuck? Thing back Why in the are we box. even voting on this? <laughs> because you Open said that to vote. I've had it out, but it's, I haven't took it out of the plastic or anything. Just look at it. Corey, we're voting because you said the vote. William Sykes? What's up? Oh, it's Patrick. <laughs> can you hear it? Patrick. We can hear you. Good old William Sykes there. Hello. So, what about this? Hello. Oh, we're still focused on Eric. <laughs> uh, no. What about yeah. this? Nightmare Should I open this? Should this be opened or yes. sealed up? It's, what sealed. Is it? it's too shiny for me to tell. Oh, a nightmare or something on Elm Street. Guess what con this came from, Michael? Mine? Cause that yeah. Was really? 
Yeah, yeah, Eric bought me this at Anime Blast. Wow, what vendor was that? Uh, the best vendor. They're the ones that the next selling all the little uh, those weird food items. Yeah, location's not gonna work for me, but I'll do my best to figure it out. <laughs> I didn't get to go in there that much actually. So no, I, I should open it. So. Okay, guys, right now live on Vitamin Geek TV. Oh, it's an unboxing. It's an unboxing. So wait, Actually, what? I'm not going to unbox it. I'm just going to pull the... the. Yeah, oh. mine, didn't, mine didn't have none of that on there, dude. And you got to say what it is. It's too shiny for me to uh, tell. No, a, don't stop. Keep doing that. <laughs> don't here? stop. Keep doing that? Okay. Well, Nick, years ago, they, the, I think it was original Nintendo, they released these video games based off these movies, Robocop, Number on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Yeah. Well, now they've released these, um, I don't know what scale they are, uh, figures inch. of the 8-bit versions. Six inch. Oh, yeah. so that's a figure. And the box is meant to be, look just like the uh, artwork that was used on the game cartridge and the game box. And oh, that's awesome. the, game. the first one they released was the Jason, you got Friday the, the 13th. The is the second one, and Robocop's the third one. Very cool. Yeah, well, I don't have that plastic, dude. I, it's got a nice window on there to look at it. <laughs> I'm about to see the window. I'm about to open her up. Hey, well, if he's doing that, Eric, where did yes. you get your frames done for those things behind you? Walmart. Oh, okay, good idea. Yeah, three bucks a piece. That's what I was hoping for. You can get the dollar ones, but I got the three dollar ones because they're, like, they're a little bit nicer design and they hold up a little bit better. Hey, I'll go three dollar. I'm a big spender. No, seriously, though, that's way better than what I was, what I was thinking, so that's good. Well, because if you buy the one dollar ones, it's just it's basically uh, just like raw wood painted black. It looks like crap. Oh uh, yeah. No, I get to look at it. I didn't get to look at it. it yeah. Looks badass. Well, you have to you have to make his be the dominant one. Otherwise, every time we talk or make a sound, it'll. Hold it up again, Gore. My God, dude, you're all over the place. <laughs> It looks weird, no hat. The hat's in there. Man. <laughs> Got them MC <laughs> Hammer pants on. Yeah. They're shiny. Can't dream this stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take it out of the box, though. Out of the box. We're take it out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with it after I pull it out of the box? What do you, what do you normally do with it after you pull Put it, it back in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> I'm going to leave him in the box for now. It's got a nice window on it. Of course you would. I can look in there and see him. I, you guys want me well, to read this look, to you? If you're not brave enough to take him out of the box, that's one thing. But you don't have to go making excuses for it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> creepy, creepy figure, says Liz. Liz, you don't even know the half of it. You haven't seen my basement. Hey, it is a creepy thing. city. Are you not in your basement? Yeah. Oh, okay. You'll see. Uh, yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. All those horror masks. See those, uh... Man, you cannot tell what the hell those are, can you? <laughs> they look no. like aliens. What is it? My masks. Do you know what this is? I know Corey does. Oh, uh, Resident, hey, Evil. Resident yeah. Evil. I've been looking for some of them. Where you get yours from? Butt plug. <laughs> no, this is, this, actually can't, this is a screen used. Now okay. Liz wants me to leave it in the box. I'm going to do that. Well, yeah, because otherwise it's going to go in the cupboard and come to life and haunt your mini dream. Dude, when I seen that movie, I was so happy. I was like, dude, Mater made can come to life. Oh, yeah. That's the one you wanted to come to life? You don't yeah. even tiny Vader can force choke you, right? Yeah, but, you know, he's like Chucky size. I'm going to squash his little plastic ass. That didn't work <laughs> well for people that far. And see, I've got enough, enough figures out of the box on my shelf over here. <sighs> wow. Man, your room is awesome. I know. I know. It goes all the way around the top. You're so humble about it. Are, are, those, are those video games or DVDs behind them? Those are DVDs. Okay. Good is that night. an office or is that just is that your actual bedroom? My actual bed. <laughs> Might as well be both. I wouldn't it's, leave. it's bigger than it looks, looks on this little tiny webcam. It's, it's bigger like, on the okay. inside. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that's my that's my I that's on my first bookshelf. I have another bookshelf that's entirely filled too. In fact, I am a little disappointed that your walls aren't painted Tardis blue, 
to give the impression that it's larger than it really is. Well, if the white the the light reflects on the white, it makes my room look bigger than it really is. Uh, that's fair. It does look like the sun's coming out of the upper corner behind you. <laughs> that's an actual light. Oh, success. The only figures I collect are my awesome anime figures. That's from Liz. <laughs> Liz, ask a question so we can answer it. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I'm glad you got figures and stuff. But I still want to know why that daredevil is just staring at you. Like, have you fed it this week? He's what? giving you that look like, I'm real tired of your shit, Corey. <laughs> You're a little tired of your shit. I mean, yeah. I'm blind and stuff. We would know because it's what your co-host gives you. <laughs> How many daredevils do you guys see in the background? <laughs> uh, more than he does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> bad joke. I don't know. All the time I could see was uh, Mr. Manhattan Speedo behind you the whole time. Uh, it does really draw the eye. <laughs> <laughs> It'll like draw a, more than that. Man, like yeah, that's um, what she said. I only see two, to be honest. Uh, I've got, I've got uh, Dr. Manhattan statue, Rorschach, and the comedian. And yeah. I've yet to open any of them. Ah, uh, this is a good question. <laughs> oh, Corey gave me this one. I thought you were force choking yourself. Oh, wow. What's that? Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Does it still make noise? Yeah. I took the batteries out every so often and put them back in there. That was a buck. What is it supposed to do? <laughs> it's annoying as fuck. We have a, a viewer question. Uh, oh. Liz McDaniel of Chattanooga, Tennessee says, yeah. What is your favorite manga? I'm going to start with Patrick Sykes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I wouldn't know. <laughs> He's like, well, I, w I had one, but I went to the doctor to get it cured. Wow. Michael <laughs> Miller, what's your favorite manga? And don't you dare list more than one. Oh, dang it. Really? Yeah, um, just one. Oh, my God. Manga's way harder, to be honest. I'm going to go with Beck. It's a great anime because you actually have the music, but the anime itself gets cut off. Band's pretty good too. If you read you the say, whole story, Beck? yeah, Beck. Like, I'm a loser, baby. <laughs> same, same spelling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, so speaking of Beck, his new album sounds all right. So, did you say I'm a loser, baby, or I'm gonna <laughs> lose your old baby? <laughs> I'm a loser, baby. Yeah, it's one of those. So why don't you happen. kill me? But Eric, we all know you're avoiding the question that is coming your yeah. way. <laughs> How did you cure your manga, Eric? Uh, ointment from CVS. Well, I'm just going to get that on the soundboard. I'm bringing the soundboard back. He only lives near a Walgreens. <laughs> and a Baskin Rotten Up uh, Dairy Queen. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, have you read a manga, Eric? I have, but I could not tell you the name of it. <coughs> I guess it's the one that go that you open the opposite way. Um, magical girls. Not always. I actually read one not recently that when I was at Books a Million, they had one there. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> they have a lot there. Um, oh, this was like a this was a big one too. It's about the size of a gra uh, big graphic novel. Um, so there's Dance of the Vampire Bond that has a really big one now. High School of the Dead has a giant big one. Um, which that's is probably color. what it was. There was something dead. Yeah, it's probably was it color. Um, they they released two omnibuses, and they're all color. I think it was, but it wasn't like bright colors. It's like very lightly colored. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, normally it's black and white, but it doesn't take much color to make it more. All right, Andre. Andre, favorite manga. <laughs> Andre. Andre, I had tired enough. Tired of your shit. <laughs> I pass. Uh, Get a little tired of your shit, Andre. All right, I'm answering Corey. questions, man. Corey, moment of truth. I've been asking for questions all night. We finally get a question. 
and the guy hides behind a piece of paper. Uh, my favorite manga is hey. um, <laughs> the uh, Kuka manga. Have you read the? You got the Ghost <laughs> in the Shell one, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Oh well, shit! I got said that. Oh, there you go. One that still has the pretty. Like I don't know if it's done. They released the first two volumes, but I don't remember if it was longer than that, Corey, and if they just stopped it midway. What's that? The ghost. They re-released the Ghost in the Shell manga in these really cool, like, big formatted books. Well, these, let me, you know, these? Uh, I wait. Hold on. Let me select it on yours. Uh, pull it back. A standalone complex. Oh yeah. Uh, turn it to the side slightly. Well, that's like oh, the flare, the glare. Uh, well, I can't. It tell looks it. like I'm an trying, advertisement. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to judge the thickness. No, this is an advertisement. This isn't the actual book. I don't have the actual book. Oh, uh, then yes. Um, no, actually. But there, there was a standalone complex, like. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be standalone then. <coughs> standalone sequel. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I'll, I'll tell you a book that everybody should have in their house. And, Corey, you need to definitely... The Bible? Duh. Yeah. I knew okay. it. Really well, is. there's another book that everybody should have in their house, and this is one you the need to read. Bug. Yellow Pages? I have to read do it. Dude, fuck that. Uh, yeah, I have uh, That's the Hold on, how do I mute it, Eric right? from my vision? You don't like it? Hide from broadcast. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You muted him. That's what you did. I, I muted him and made his camera go away. I still see him. I can't unmute him now. Uh, yeah, if we've done this before, Corey. He has to unmute himself. <laughs> Can you still see me? <laughs> yeah. Loud and clear. I can, like, hide you, but I can't unmute you. Yeah. All right, well, that was a good That book question. scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. Yeah. What, oh, there's God. a story in there about a girl who goes to a graveyard or something, and she has a dagger, and she stabs it into the ground, and, and, and there's supposed to be a hand come up and grab her dress, and she tries to run away, and when she runs away, she feels her dress being pulled and thinks it's a hand and dies of fright because she stabbed her dress into the ground. That's it. Yeah. This is why Corey never wears dresses to graveyards. <laughs> Only frilly I mean, ones. Which is, you know, pretty much horse shit. But, Here's the thing yeah. about this book, dude. They don't make these anymore. They re released them. They've changed all the artwork where it's nice and friendly now. Yeah. <sighs> Friends. You can't you can't get these anymore. Yeah. Patrick. Yo. You missed all our guests. It was, very, it was very intense. Man. Yeah, but, yeah. but it will be forever recorded on <laughs> YouTube's. Yeah, assuming YouTube. Corey doesn't try to use Firefox again. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus, we lost a lot of content due to my fucking up. Oh, uh, you uh, Have you gone back and checked? I think we still only lost like maybe a minute or so. I want. I'm gonna play the the first one and see how far it goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. I assume it was pretty quick. <sighs> Uh, oh shit! Forty-six minutes. Whoa. Yeah, see, that had to be fairly long. I kept feeling like you kept bringing it out, and I kept feeling like they were like, "I'm done." <laughs> Patrick, can you see us? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he can see us. We can't see him. He's got the advantage. <laughs> oh, artwork being held up. Well, Patrick, I, I can show you these. If I won't have them anymore for a while, I'm going to have them framed. I won't be able to pull them out anymore. What's that? So we have to have to see at us. Well, shit. <laughs> you see these? 
stamps. Oh, fun. Straight oh, from, the, straight from the UK. Oh, awesome. Nice. I wanted to get those. That's impressive. So I've got a piece of artwork that's got all the doctors stacked on, kind of like uh, the Brady Bunch. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to have these lined all the way around the photo. There's a frame. story about a traveling doctor. Moving along a companion everywhere he goes. <laughs> and then he'll leave them into trouble. <laughs> yeah, so at an hour and three minutes of us starting the recording, it just... Right in the middle of Travis talking about something. Mm. Uh, yeah. And it just says, we'll be right back. Hangouts on air. Oh, <laughs> man. Like a... Well, no, there's a second recording. When I got it working again. Yeah. So you had a backup? Because, see, well, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> but I didn't realize that I was off air because I switched browsers. Yeah. Oh, no. You should, you switch, but you don't close out. So, I mean, we would have, to be fair, we would have had to do that eventually anyway. So. You can, you can edit it. Yeah, it'll be fun. <coughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hey. Was he? That was he last was? week. Oh, uh, last, last time, week. last time. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, the outtakes thing. It's not really outtakes. No. It's just shit I didn't put in the show. Yeah. Because it had nothing well, to do with anything. It's just people talking. You talking about my shard, my sharding experience. Your oh, were you on there talking about shit in your pants? Yep. Oh. Hey, sh <laughs> I should stop the broadcast. We should go <laughs> off live and just talk. It, it's already on there. <coughs> no, I mean, we're going live to YouTube right now. Yeah, man. <laughs> you, want me, you want me to stop recording? Wait, ask, ask the question of the group. <laughs> has anybody has anybody ever shit their pants on the podcast? No, no. Ask what question? Be specific, the, Michael. Ask the listeners if they want us to stop going live. Okay, Liz and whoever else the other person is, um, do you want to stop watching us? And after a minute, no answer is the same as a yes. We want to stop watching you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you got, Corey, you got to embrace the awkward silence. Did y'all watch that Pokemon video? Not yet. <laughs> no, I don't like Jamaican porn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I find oh, it has a good. certain appeal, to be honest. <laughs> hey, man, put it in my butt, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of right like... Right, cool. It's kind of like Cool Runnings. It's not where you go to first. But when you <laughs> No, Michael, Michael, do not ruin that movie for me. That's all I'm going to think about. Hey, man. Hey, man. Take your Cool Runnings. Put it right near me, Titans, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Eric, all I'm saying is, what do you think he was doing with his lucky egg? <laughs> and uh, he's not, he's not practicing his kegels? I don't know. He's not and another nightmare ensues after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Donate to Vitamin Geek to pay for our therapy bills. <laughs> Did you know oh. that fifty? We've had fifty views on that Conuga prep video. Like the first time we did this, we got. I'm stopping the broadcast. Okay. All right. There's no. We're just talking to each other. We're not even fucking doing anything. Oh no, it works because the one answer we got is saying basically.